back with another quick update for Big Brother 23. It still is coming down all to Derek F's decision with the veto. But there's drama in the house, and it's Kylan causing the drama. He's been having a, some emotional breakdowns now that he sees his game possibly slipping away. Him and Derek F have had some petty little arguments on Sunday night. But because Derek F is having such a hard time with this decision, Xavier is doing what I have talked about possibly being an option and that he should maybe use the veto on Aza so Aza can vote out Kylan. If that is what Xavier wants as HOH, that might be the best way to go, especially if Derek F continues to be his usual mess of a self. I mean, it's weird because this is Derek F's chance to make a move in the game, I guess, by being the sole vote to get out Kylan. But I don't actually know if that's best for his game. If if he would be playing this week right, if Derek F was actually a gamer, he would have had some good chats with Kylan. And since Kylan's already upset with Xavier now, and the fact that Xavier, well, the fact that he saved Xavier with that veto the other night, and then Xavier put him on the block, and he's regretting saving Xavier and wanting to take Xavier to the end. Wow, what a shocker. But if Derek I was playing this week right, he would have had talks with Kylan, kept Kylan, because then either way, Kylan or Xavier are taking him to the end in that case. So, I mean, it goes the other way around, too. If Aza wins, he's taking, she's she's probably taking Derek F to the, to the end. I mean, she's already told Xavier this, and Xavier still wants to keep Aza because he thinks it would be easier to beat Aza and Derek F in the final challenge rather than Kylan and Derek F. And he's probably right about that. But yeah, that is where we stand with the veto drama. Kylan keeps having breakdowns, and it's really, it's up to Derek F., but also up to Xavier. Xavier could use the veto on Aza, and Aza could make the decision to get Kylan out of this game. Now, that's really all the, the, the game information, really. Um, I, I feel like I probably won't have to do another update until Thursday, unless something major happens these next two days. I, would, I just wanted to kind of reflect on the season and be my usual antagonistic self. And just, I, I just really need to say that I feel like for all of us that aren't super stands and for all of us that don't have to try to like conform all our opinions to please the stands, the best part of this season has been the Stan meltdowns. This has definitely been the best part of BB23. It started with Derek X. And I really enjoyed Derek X as a person. I think as a player, he ended up being super lackluster compared to some of the overrating all of us were doing because he was learning fast, but then I think he hit a he hit a roadblock and never really recovered. But I still needed Derek X to go because I knew the stands were going to give me great meltdowns, and they did not disappoint. The meltdowns were on point, and next was Claire. Claire, who should not even have stands because she is worthless furniture, but she did. And once again, the stands were going crazy. But the cherry on top has definitely been Tiffany and Hannah going out in the same nights and the meltdowns from these stands. I mean, it's really pathetic that they are actually doing the usual bullshit of threatening the families of these players on social media. It's always pathetic when this fan base goes that far. But the meltdowns have been so good. So good. Just everybody arguing still about Tiffany and Hannah. And it's been going on four days now that they've been eliminated and the stands are still trying to make excuses instead of just giving accountability for why they're out of this game. And I can't help but remember, and look, I like Hannah, but Hannah once said in this game that Aza was worthless and never wins anything. Then Aza won the HOH to take her out. And I've been laughing ever since, if I'm being real. Because the stats make it this way. I like Derek X and Hannah. 
not so much Claire and Tiffany. But their stands have made all four of these players so funny to laugh at. I'm sorry, it's just true. It's just true. But I mean, I'm laughing more so at the stands than the players, except for Claire. Another pleasant part of this season has been just how fucking accurate I have been in my calls. I, I like to bet on some sports. I've won a lot of money on tennis this season. I, I, I've been sucking at the NFL so far. I've been absolutely terrible betting on the NFL so, NFL so far. But I, I killed in tennis this year. And I just wish I could bet on Big Brother because I would have made a fortune, especially because all the fans who would be betting would be listening to these big, big podcasts who have been wrong all season. So they would be betting on the wrong people, driving up the money line for the right people. And I would be fucking rich right now if I could bet on Big Brother with all the fucking calls that I have made. One last note on social media. I keep seeing these big Twitter accounts with a lot of followers keep saying, now the game's going to be harder for the black players because the cookout. I mean, the reason the cookout was a thing in the first place is because this game has been pretty much anti-black for the past decade and has been very hard for black players in this game as it is. So this season changes nothing from what it already was before. So stop with that nonsense trying to act like the cookout was bad for future black players games when it was already bad before it. (sighs) Let me read some comments from yesterday's video since there was a lot. When there's a lot of comments, I like to read the comments on said video with some of my shit talking. Ray Rush said, I can see Kylan cuddling and fingering <laughs> Derek have to stay in the house. You got me cracking up. I swear I was eating and saw you do the Nicole F and spit out my food. I'm just saying, I think that would that would keep Kyle in the game for sure. Miracle said, anytime you drag RH, Rob has a podcast. It gives me life. They've been biased forever and great players based on emotional reactions. That's 100% true. Ray Rush said, that's why I don't even deal with Rob as a podcast, because they be with that BS and I'm not falling for it. Period. Keep dragging all these folks. I'll try. When they when they get on my nerves, which is once a week. I feel like once a week I have to have a rap video when I talk about this goddamn show. So Bonita Tucker said, always enjoy listening to your views. Rob has a podcast. Motives was always questionable to me when I started seeing people that look like me on their panel. I mean, I do think it's questionable if they keep, you know, pushing the same anti-Black player narrative while trying to, you know, show face that they have Black people talking on their channel. But nothing has really changed with their Big Brother narratives. Yu Yui said that Dragging Towards Rob has a podcast is so good. Can't wait for the mini documentary coming soon, I hope. Um... We'll see if they piss me off this week and if I hope to have the time to do so. Um, Boo Boo said, Kylan just needs to flirt with Derek and Derek will cave. I think you're right. Instead of Kylan throwing bitch fits with Derek F, he should actually be flirting more. It would help his game a whole lot more. He did it with the, the women a couple weeks ago to try and save face. He's failing with Derek F. Boo Boo said, an ancient head, ouch, she's my age. Sorry, Boo Boo, I could get a little a little carried away when I'm trying to take shots at people. Victoria W. also added to that comment, said, that while that's good news for me too, because I went on a little rant about baby boomers. And, and my comment to this was, you know, Karen, who I talked about yesterday from BB Ken 5, is about to be 60. But she's posting on Twitter all the time, trying to remain cool when 80% of Twitter is 18 to 49. I just don't think baby boomers should really be on Twitter giving their unwarranted fucking opinions is all I'm trying to say. But I will try to refrain from calling baby boomers old ancient heads. We'll just refer to them as old heads from now on. 
Uh, Queen Ronnie said, I agree that Rob has a podcast is biased, but if we give Oz a credit, then we must give Big D the same credit. He is no less social than she is, and she is no less of a goat than Big D. She has one more win than he. Some would say that they both had no strategy at all. Floaters get to the end of the game because they are non-threatening, but either way, they both are in the same boat. See, the thing that sets Oz apart and sets Oz apart from literally almost every other floater that's ever played Big Brother is floaters tend to become easy pawns. Ozzy was able to avoid that. And I'll get into more of that here with some other comments, but I do want to read the comment I left as to why Ozzy's social game outweighs Big D's social game. And Big D also has a good social game. He just doesn't try as hard is really what it comes down to. Um, I said, Aza has actively worked her social game since week one, and I have documented all of it on my updates all season. Derek F. has done the bare minimum. Outside of the fact that Aza was not on the block until Final Four, a giant feat for a woman on Big Brother, Aza also developed relationships with all of the non cookout members in jury, which is true, she did. Derek F. did not even try with Derek X and Claire, which he did not. Aza was able to play the middle during the two biggest votes, Christian and Derek X, which I've talked about before. Derek F. was able to do that with Christian, but not with Derek X, because Derek F. had no relationship with Derek X. I mean, there's a whole lot more. You could really just go read the, the comments, but I also just said, I cannot stick up for Derek F. like I can for Aza, because he truly did the bare minimum and did not even truly try to social, uh, did not even try socially at times where Aza always has. And that's really what it comes down to. Plus, Derek F. still wants to go to the end with one of the guys that he's not going to beat. Meanwhile, Aza wants to cut Eric Xavier at final three if she happens to win that, which I think is a big move for her. Queen Ronnie? I don't know if it's Ronnie or Roni, but Queen Ronnie says, I do appreciate you giving Xavier credit that many don't. He is no worse of a player than some others like Hayden. Exactly. I admit I was rooting for Tiff, but to say Xavier or Kylan have not put in work is false. To say they are flops is to imply the first black season is a flop. Exactly. Exactly. Rob has a podcast, stays on that bullshit. Jason Frisbee says, Andy Heron can shut the fuck up with his ugly cat. He was a lame default winner in a season with arguably the worst cast. All of these people are mad at Aza, the only dark-skinned black woman this season, when she's made the top four despite not being respected as a player by most of the house guests all season long. And Rob has a podcast, has, a, has been giving Jacob Jones too big of a platform. He's nice to look at, but he offers no strategic game or insight. Well, I won't comment on Jacob Jones because I don't really watch Rob has a podcast. I only watch clips because they're so wrong all the time. I watched one of their rankings earlier in the season, like I've said before, and I think I said in the comments that they were so wrong that I, well, what was the point of watching? But Jason Frisbee, I always enjoy. You've left a couple of well thought out comments and I appreciate it. Victoria, Victoria W said, yep, she said some really stupid shit I don't watch when she's on, that being Melissa, and she does. Esperanza Baez says, I'm a big BB fan and came across your videos and love it. You have the same perspective as I. All in all, a true fan wants to see the player with the best game move ahead as the cookout had all six uniquely the best players as they got themselves there. So just as the cookout leaves with grace, all of us should too. Keep sharing your 411 and don't stop checking those confused haters. Esperanza, thank you for watching and joining the channel. And um, yeah, I mean, the cookout, the cookout all worked as a unit. That's why they all got to the fucking end together. So trying to give certain players too much credit, I don't roll with that. Keisha D said, I actually don't think Aza had a great social game. Wrong. I said in the comments, getting as far in the game as Aza did without being nominated or a pun is such a rare social feat that she is only the third woman to do it in out of 32 BBUS and BB Ken seasons. The stats don't lie. And this is what all these other podcasts get wrong because all these other mostly white podcasts. And I just want to say Recency Bias Radio is probably the only other person that I've seen the past two seasons, BB Ken 
And this one, even though I disagreed with him on Tashan, but I understand his point in his his YouTube channel. So I understand why he was mad at Tashan. But Tashan played a great fucking game. One of the best winners of the past several years on BBUS or BBCAN. But yes, recency bias radio also stays pretty accurate. But all the white podcasters, and I've checked out a little bit here and there of a lot of them. Obviously not all of them, but I've seen Nerdtainment all say the same shit. Loves Rob has the podcast. I've seen Jolene say all the same shit as Rob has a podcast, which is weird because during BB Can they disagreed. So yeah, but this season, everybody is, seems to be pushing the same narratives and it just, it all comes down to appeasing the stands for views and likes is really what it comes down to. But yes, Aza, this is, the stats don't fucking lie. Aza social game to get her to the final four before she was ever on the block up until final four. She was never on the block up until final four was only done by Danielle Reyes in season three. And that was with less players. She only had to deal with 11 other players and no veto, where Aza had to get to that point with her social game against 15 other players and more challenges and more twists and more ridiculousness. And she still managed to stay off the block. The only other women besides those two to do it is that old head, not ancient head, Karen and BB Ken 5 got to Final Four without being nominated. These stats don't lie. The fact that this is such a hard feat to pull off socially that only three women have ever done it in 32 seasons is why Oz's social game is proven to be great. This doesn't happen often. Usually players that are seen as, you know, that get their targets to be small and that aren't seen as threats are always pawns. But Aza had people within her alliance working for her to keep her off the block. When her alliance was trying to talk shit about Aza and some didn't want to work with her, outsiders in outsiders of the cookout were defending Aza at times because Aza made a relationship with almost every single person in this game. And since jury, every single person in this game. That's great social play right there. Only three women have done this. Aza's one of them. So the stats don't lie, but you know what lies and who lies? Emotional podcasters who are biased constantly and are just pushing agendas.